everybody, and today I'm going to be analyzing Liverpool versus Manchester City. They just played in the Premier League, and there are some really cool concepts. Today's video is going to be made using Keyframe, which is a great way to create professional level illustrations. It's what I use for a lot of my videos, and so let's get right into it because I'm going to try and move through this pretty quickly because there's a few things I really want to talk about. So again, we can look in the initial buildup of Manchester City, they go with uh, back three using Ederson at the base, but this was used sparingly in the match. Most of the game was played in the midfield third. In the first half especially, Cancelo was used as the double pivot alongside Rodri. And then Liverpool went with their 4-3-3 with their front three and their normal pressing mechanisms. So now, when the play is moved back into Ederson, both center defenders will move alongside him. Cancelo and Rodri will look to overload Firmino, who is responsible for using his cover shadow to block progression into the double pivot. So when there's two players, it can be harder for Firmino because he has to deal with two and he has he has a midfielder to jump. He has a midfielder to jump with him, um, causing asymmetric rotation. If in fact the ball is going to one of the pivots that Firmino is not marking. So this creates space in behind, but in the first half especially, Liverpool's intensity of pressing was very good and Manchester City's lack of width in the wide areas, in the mid-range passes, this lack of width gave them a little bit of an isolated build-up um, just between the first five players. So just to keep that in mind, so in the first half, Liverpool did press very, very well. And they, the two forwards, another important note to make, is they were able to start more narrow than usual because of the lack of width, which gave them better access to the ball and it increased the intensity at which they pressed. So then here, when the ball was played back, rather than looking to find one of the double pivots, we see here, and we see Firmino now, as we talked about earlier, being overloaded in that double pivot area. The the press wasn't effective because of the numerical balance and, and the cover shadows. It was it was mainly effective in the first half because of the intensity of the press. So as we see here, Manchester City have the potential for a third man option to play in to Bernardo Silva and back to Cancelo, who is the free player here because Tiago, as we see in the corner of our screen, screen, he had to jump out to press Bernardo Silva in the wide area, so Cancelo is effectively free, but because of the intensity of the press, City didn't have the, the time to make these decisions, and their actions were a bit slow, which led to Liverpool being able to close down the space and win the ball back more often or force mistakes from Manchester City. So moving up the field now, now we'll take a look at Liverpool's build-up and in the first half especially they I thought they had a lot of control in possession even though their possession may not have led to many high potential goal scoring opportunities but their, their possession was controlled because of their structure and their counter pressing and the intensity at which they moved the ball and when they lost the ball it was higher up the field and they had players around the ball to then recover it. So the first big key was the positioning and the relationship between Mares and Bernardo Silva, these two players here, and especially in the first half and then the second half they changed first half Mares played further forward, oftentimes 
uh, going as a as a second striker to Phil Foden, and then Bernardo Silva would drop almost as a right midfielder, and he was responsible his work rate for controlling Andy Robertson, who was going much more progressive. Um, consistently rather than Trent Alexander-Arnold. So this asymmetry on the right side was down to the fact of the, the danger of Andy Robertson and his potential to get forward. So that's the explanation for why Bernardo Silva was so deep in the first half and why City's structure was very asymmetrical. But then Liverpool in possession used their 2-3 uh, buildup and it was very fluid. So oftentimes, as we normally see from Liverpool, the wide players in the half space would drop alongside the central defenders um, one at a time, so to create that back three, um, to pull City out to break their connections to then press in behind. So when Liverpool would do this, they would break connections and then they would try and play a third line pass or a more direct option to someone in their front three or between the lines. So now here, just want to highlight again the positioning of Mares and Bernardo Silva. Mares typically always stayed higher, like we said before. And in this picture, he's, he even is coming a bit deeper just because of the danger of the situation. But oftentimes, Bernardo Silva would be cast as the right midfielder to even cover Andy Robertson, and especially in high areas in the first half when they weren't so compact, but we can look at the compactness here and the deeper City go, the, usually the more often than not they move into a 4-5-1, which we see here. And we just see the compactness of their lines, which is crucial for controlling the movements of the Firmino, Salah, and Mane between the lines, and it also makes it easy to cover in behind because the closer connections you have, the closer you are to another player who's covering you. So the biggest takeaway, though, is pay attention to Bernardo Silva and Mares and their positioning and how that changes in the second half. Because when Bernardo Silva goes further forward, it really changes the game and it allows Manchester City to create better access on the ball in a higher area and press from the front foot. And so now Liverpool, this was the previous sequence to the same phase we just looked at, and we can then just see their front three players um, playing very narrow. Between the lines, we have Trent Alexander-Arnold jumping as Salah takes the ball towards the center. And then we have Wijnaldum, Curtis Jones, and Thiago as the center players. But really Wijnaldum will be the holding player, so Thiago and Thiago and Curtis Jones will have more freedom to go forward and uh, affect the game through the half spaces and in advanced areas. So now Manchester City in possession in the first half, like we said, Cancelo and Rodri were the holding midfielders, but a key thing that I want to make about uh, Rodri's positioning, especially in the first half, but a little in the second half, was oftentimes uh, John Stones would come into the half space on the right hand side, and this would force Diaz to occupy the central corridor, and now this the distance then that was created between Diaz. The distance that was created between Diaz and Zinchenko was extremely large. So this this pass would almost be forbidden by Guardiola just because of the sheer um, spacing of it and the potential for Asala to then intercept this pass. So how they solved this problem, it was quite clever and deliberate that this space was left so open because it gave them potential for Rodri to then drop deeper. I'm going to make that a blue arrow. 
So Rodri was able to then drop deeper into the back three. And then this is when Manchester City were create a back three. And Cancelo would then occupy the center corridor as the lone pivot, like in highlight here. So then this, this decreased the distance to Zinchenko and now the three back system. And then obviously uh, Cancelo would drop into the pivot area. And it would also throw off the pressing from Liverpool because of their spatial orientation when the ball's in the center and it would change their pressing reference points. So just making it a little bit harder for Liverpool, but in the first half their pressing was very good and effective. So now we can look at the second picture in this sequence. So now Rodri drops deeper. Cancelo is now the lone pivot. And now again we see Bernardo Silva deeper and in a wider area, which he will then um, move more centrally in the second half, which creates a huge difference. But just talking about the spacing, it does decrease the space um, between the two wing backs and now the back three. So just to keep an eye on this, and then obviously Liverpool's compactness in the mid block is extremely good, um, extremely well re re rehearsed and controlling this pivot area was was not a problem for them. Um, it was a little bit when City played with a double pivot, but the problem then came in the wide areas because of this very, very large compactness um, from Liverpool's mid-block shape. So now we'll look at Liverpool in possession and in the second half, Manchester City, what they did differently. So now, whereas we saw Mares, Mares was in this position, which is now occupied by Bernardo Silva. So now, first right away in the second half, we see a, a quick change with Bernardo Silva higher up the field with a higher work rate, able to press from the front foot, and Mares now in a deeper asymmetric position um, because the ball didn't progress through Robertson as much as maybe Pep intended, so he can he could afford Mares to play into this position, and now Bernardo Silva was able to press from the front foot. And City's just vertical partnerships between players was very very good. Um, just in this picture here, we can see the amount of distance between these players when they're jumping. When the forwards jump, the midfielders jump with them to maintain this compactness and control the space of the three Liverpool midfielders, as we can see just right here. So this is all controlled due to the vertical partnerships and with the space between the lines. There's, there's no players, so again, it can be afforded. And with Bernardo Silva on the ball, like pressing higher up the field, against Liverpool who play more direct it's important that when a team plays direct they cannot play direct freely and they have pressure on them just so they can't um, have the freedom to play these balls uncontested. So now again we see here uh, Manchester City's 4-4-2 shape is a very clear 4-4-2 especially in the second half. controlling the area and one thing I noticed about Liverpool today they didn't use their eights or as much into the half space as I thought they would have um, but again just wanted to show the shape with Mars deeper Bernardo Silva higher and this switch between them which really really helped Manchester City into the second half um, so just a switch there want to show that again and note that the midfielders from Liverpool didn't drop into deeper areas as much as I've seen them in the past, which I thought was a little surprising. So now, when this did happen, Manchester City in their 4-4-2 shape, the ball was played longer and more direct. So 
So Manchester City had a very well rehearsed back line. But now we can see the players from uh, Liverpool and how they responded to this more aggressive press from Manchester City. We have Robertson wide in the wide area. And now we have Curtis Jones making a longer run between the fullback and center back. So by running between them, he pins them, and then this creates the opportunity to use the overload between the lines. So Manchester City would then obviously drop deeper and try and prevent progression, but with the higher press, this did leave them a little more susceptible to direct passes um, between the lines because there was more space to then play. But with the change of Bernardo Silva to apply more pressure on the defenders, it made it a little bit more difficult. So now, looking at City in possession again, we do see in the second half, Cancelo play as the single pivot, sometimes with, again, Rodri dropping deeper. So this concept didn't go away entirely. But now we see the, the positioning of Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden now, Ilkay Gundogan, and Cancelo are much more advanced and they're playing higher up the field. So now rather than Gundogan coming deeper into a position like this, which I can highlight right now. So instead of Gundogan coming into a position like here, he stayed higher up the field, which which gave the players more space and gave Rodri, or Cancelo, sorry about that, gave Cancelo more passing options into advanced areas. So I will show you this. So Cancelo was then able to have advanced options and wide options from this pivot area. And now one more thing to note is that with Rodri dropping deeper between, um, or just dropping deeper into the half space, it opened up the half space to then play diagonal passes, and it even opened up a little bit um, for a more vertical pass into the center corridor for Foden to drop into. But this was all down to the connections that Manchester City were able to make between Liverpool's 4-3-3, which I'm highlighting now. The Curtis Jones on the left line album and Thiago um, in the center and right position. And then the players in Manchester City occupying the space between them. So Foden, really crucial point. Foden occupies the space between the two midfielders, which forces them more narrow, as we see here. Forces these two more narrow, and then it frees up Hilkai Gundogan in the wide area to receive this pass. Just because of Foden's positioning, going between them in the blind side will then open up Gundogan, and then on the opposite side, stretching on the outside shoulder now to just try and manipulate the uh, three midfielders in different ways at one time. So now, again, we can see an example where, where Rodri doesn't jump and Cancelo he occupies the wide area, which he did much, much more often in the second half. So we have our two center backs staggered to create um, circulation and uh, strength and connection to evade a press if they run into trouble. We have Rodri now at the base of the pivot with his three midfielders, and they're slightly more narrow here. Um, just because of the space, and it opens up the half spaces to move into. So when they start more narrow, it gives them more potential to move into the half spaces. And then Cancelo now, in the wide area, gives Manchester City a uh, more concrete and shorter passing option going out wide around mm -hmm. the Liverpool press, rather than always trying to break them through the center. And this, this honestly 
made a big difference for, for City because it gave the front three from Liverpool more to think about. Rather than being compact and narrow the whole time, they were they had more to think about with closing off the wide um, the wide players now, like Cancelo um, for Manchester City. So now the last picture I wanted to show you now is with Bernardo Silva and Rodri as a double pivot, and now Zinchenko drops in as a central defender um, in the half space, not as a central defender, but more as just a deep line playmaker in the half space as an asymmetric back four, which I'll highlight here. So asymmetric back four, Cancelo goes wider and more into the wide area and in the interior part of the wide area. Um, so now the shape becomes different and Bernardo Silva looks to occupy the space alongside Rodri as the double pivot and the players are always to Rodri's right so if Rodri does want to drop between um, fullback and center back he can but now with Bernardo Silva coming deeper this pulls Liverpool's structure out more and this distance play between Cancelo and John Stones gives Mane a greater distance to press and now we can just see this shape of from Liverpool started to get a little stretched and the gap started to form in the second half for them. Although they did play quite well and much better in recent times, it individual mistakes and not finishing their chances when they became available were the kiss of death for Liverpool in today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed the match. And please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.